Hi, I'm Annette Loudon. I've been teaching yoga since 1994, so for a long time now. A very large part of my teaching has been for people with all kinds of disability, from the result of all kinds of illnesses, conditions, etc. Many people have been confined to wheelchairs, so why is yoga important for this group of people? Well, yoga means union, and it creates unity within the body, the mind, the spirit. And it also means without being part of a greater community. The yoga philosophy is very complicated and deep, and specific in fact. And it tells us that as humans, we operate, it, operate on a number of different levels. The breath, energy, the body, our busy mind, our intellect, our spirit. So yoga teaches us that we're not just this physical body, we're far beyond that. And so this is the reason why I think my students with all kinds of disabilities have loved and flourished within from their yoga practice. So for example, the breath. Learning to slow the breath and really expand the lower, the middle, the upper ribs and contract the lower, the middle, the upper ribs does marvellous things. It slows down, for example, the sympathetic nervous system. It balances all the systems we have, respiration, endocrine, cardiovascular. It calms our mind. It even creates energy within. Then there's the mindfulness and awareness practices of yoga. For example, stopping when you're getting confused or your mind's going at 100 miles an hour with, oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? How is this illness, this condition going to affect me? Just by stopping, focusing perhaps on a sound, an external sound, on the sound of that sound, not getting involved, whether it's high, low, soft, loud, just focusing on the sound. Bringing you back to the here and now, you are beyond that worrying thought. Repetition of mantra. It needn't be a yoga mantra, or it can be Om, or one you've been specifically given, or a sacred word, a word that for you is meaningful, in whichever language is meaningful for you. Repetition of a mantra or this sacred sound has been proven to make negative mind thoughts positive mind thoughts. Again, bringing equanimity so that we can face whatever it is we're faced with, whether that is physical limitation or mind limitation. Visualization. Do you know, studies have been done, research studies in India, to show that visualization practices can improve our immune function. Then there is this whole concept of energy, the prana, within us and beyond, and how we can incorporate drawing this prana, this energy, this life force, in with the breath, with visualisation, with sound, to fill our body, our mind, our being with energy. The continuation of meditation practices, and yoga has a huge number, will also bring that inner self to that place that we all have within, a place of equanimity a place of being able to face whatever it is we have to face with. 
other practices include balancing chakras, energy centers within us. So for example, Manipur, around our solar plexus or navel, when it's balanced, it's about our ability to move on, our ability to know ourself, our courage, our resilience, that inner strength. Our heart, we know, by opening this energy center here and bringing it to balance, will balance our feelings of love, confidence, hope, kindness, whatever it is we're faced with. Research has shown all these aspects that I've spoken about, but more importantly, my students over years of practice have told me. One of my students with MS told me that she repeats the mantra of the breath, so hum, whenever she can't sleep at night. Another told me when she's in a busy street in her wheelchair, she gets very worried, so she stops and just focuses on the feeling of her clothes against her body until she gets over that. Physical practices, when we have all kinds of limitation or illnesses, can be also done in a number of ways. If there's a part of your body you can't move, studies have shown by visualising that you're moving it will bring benefits. Or you can just move the part of the body in whichever way you can at that time on that day. This is yoga, awareness of where you are right now. Sometimes I've used volunteers to come and help me with severely physically disabled students. So this is yoga as part of a greater community. An aspect of yoga also called Seva Yoga, to give back, to give unquestionably. My volunteers have told me that they get far more from a yoga practice by helping someone than when they go to their own yoga class. And the people who they've helped have told me that they love these immovable limbs being moved. They feel as if there's energy, blood even, going to places where it should flow. These are their words. Then there's the deep relaxation offered by yoga. And we know we usually finish our yoga practices with relaxation. And it seems to give that deep rest to all of us on all of these levels I've spoken about. The body, the mind, the emotions, that deep unconscious part of us that we don't even know how it's affecting us. Nowadays there's a huge amount of research on the benefits of yoga and all these aspects of yoga on people with various types of illnesses, physical, emotional, mental limitations. So if you'd like more information, you can get it at your fingertips these days just by Googling it. There's also more and more a great repertoire of books and journals being written about this. Now, whole yoga um, courses are training yoga teachers specifically for different conditions. So whatever difficulty you may be encountering, I implore you to look in to yoga as a means that will help you, if not on all these levels, then at least on one. A friend of mine with secondary breast cancer recently told me that for her, the yoga practices she's doing, which are mainly mantra repetition, have helped her stay calm and deal with what she has to deal with, but have also enriched her spirit. I leave you with that idea on Shanti.